Okay, this is Intro to Archaeology, part four, and this is the final part. Okay, a couple of other, other things you need to know. You need to know about the scientific method. If I ask you on an exam, is archaeology a science? How are you going to answer that? Think about it for a few minutes. Okay, just so you know, personally, I don't care if you think it's a science or not, but what you'd have to do is answer it using the scientific method. Okay, so what is the scientific method? Look it up. I'm not going to tell it to you, but you should know it already. If not, make sure you do know it. Okay, the other thing we have to talk about are paradigms. Really important. Very, um, how can I say it, if you want to impress your instructors, your boss, even your girlfriend or boyfriend, throw in the word paradigm even if you don't know what it means. Paradigm is very important and it's used primarily academically and you could look up the exact definition, but ultimately what it means is it's a lens that practitioners of any particular discipline use to look at a particular subject. It's a lens, it's um, a way of viewing things. Okay, what's a good example of a paradigm? When I was growing up, my friend's mother was an alcoholic. Every once in a while, her mother would go away. Where did they say she was going? They said she was going to a relative's house. Where was she really going? She was really going to rehab. Why, didn't, why were they embarrassed and why did they not say where she was really going? Because the paradigm for alcoholism or substance abuse back there was a moral paradigm. Okay, The way people viewed it was you were viewed as a bad person, a weak person, an immoral person, um, and your family was ashamed of you. Does anybody know what the paradigm now is for substance abuse? It's a medical paradigm, which means that now we say, okay, if you have a cocaine problem, if you have an alcohol problem, it's just like any other illness, you go and get help for it. That's the reason why celebrities, politicians, whoever, it's not that big of a deal anymore. So the paradigm has changed. What does this have to do with archaeology and Indiana Jones? Well, Indiana Jones represents the old paradigm of archaeology. Okay. The paradigm was what was called antiquarianism. It meant finding old things, expensive things, did we care about day-to-day -day living tools? No. So that's why archaeologists hate Indiana Jones. Now the new paradigm is reconstruction. Again, that's our jigsaw puzzle. That means that every single artifact at a site is just as important as every other one. And again, to put your jigsaw puzzle together, you need all the pieces because your jigsaw puzzle is trying to find out how a particular group of people live their daily lives. Here's something on antiquarianism, so you could look at this at your leisure. Uh, again, the new paradigm is reconstruction. A couple of other things you need to know. We talked about what the difference is between what a site is, what an artifact is, but you need to know about features, you need to know about dating, and you need to do, know the difference between observation and inference. Okay, so artifacts are items used or made by man. Features are objects used or made by man, but it's one level of analysis lower, meaning that they're things that you're not going to pick up and take with you. So you're not going to take fences. You're not going to take hearths or camp, campsites. You're not going to take a house. You're not going to take a burial. So those are all features. Okay. 
Um, so again, when we talk about what a site is, what an artifact is, again, anything made or used by man, always remember human being to be in the equation. You might see the word attributes. Attributes just means characteristics per, um, artifacts have in common. In this case, it's hard to tell, but they're all made of stone. They're all um, kind of worked on the side. Um, they're all projectile points. So this is just how you might group different kinds of artifacts. OK. So the other thing you need to know is context. Again, every artifact in relation to every other artifact means its context. If you take one artifact out without recording it, it really doesn't mean a whole lot anymore because you're taking it out of your if it you're, excuse me, you're taking it out of its archaeological text. So the location or feature in relationship with other artifacts. Nowadays, if you bring something into a museum and you say, oh, well, my uncle found this on the Pecos River in 1950, they're, they're going to say, well, sorry, this is really neat, but we have no idea what its archaeological context is or was, meaning where it was found, the depth, what was around it. These are all things that archaeologists need to know. So if anybody ever asks you, hey, can you tell me about this mask? You know, my grandfather had it in his attic. What can you tell them? All you can say is you can't say anything because it's taken out of its archaeological context. OK, observation and inference, very important. What you need to remember is an observation is something that you can actually see and describe. An inference, an educated guess. Okay, and you can look at these um, again. It's an assumption. Um, so if you look at this object, how would you describe it? What are you observing? What's your observation? You could say it's probably made of stone. It's kind of beveled at the ends, and it has two holes. Okay, so th that might be an observation. Um, and here's theirs. Now here's some inferences. Was it an owl? Was it a pendant? So understand, whenever you see these TV shows, a lot of what you're seeing is inference. Yeah, that's a nice educated guess, but it's not 100% fact. But if they just told you observations, it would be really, really boring. Um, OK, so here is, um, there's a book out called Motel of Mysteries. It's a parody on doing an archaeological dig in a Las Vegas hotel room a thousand years from now. And what they did was, OK, they went into what we know as the bathroom. They had no idea. And they found all these items, and they made inferences about how they were used. It's kind of an archaeological joke book. But anyway, that's where inference can get you. I mean, sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. OK, final thing we need to talk about, dating. How do archaeologists determine the age of specific objects? OK, there are two main categories of dating. OK, one is relative dating. And just so you can remember it, I put in a redneck wedding, ha, 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 relative dating. It's one of the main categories. What's the main example or type of relative dating? OK, so if you find an artifact in this layer and an artifact in this layer, which one's the oldest? Well, hopefully, you'll say the one on the bottom. Do you know how much older it is? No, you don't, but you can tell its age in relation to the other object. OK, so that's what stratigraphy means, looking at layers of Earth. You're, and that's why it's relative dating. You're dating things in relation to something else. The other category is what used to be called absolute. 
Now we call it chronometric, but the main category is radiocarbon dating. I put a, a picture of absolute vodka in there that didn't come out very well. But the reason why they've gotten away from absolute is because the farther back we go, we're getting dates like for homo, um, excuse me, australopithecines from four to two million years ago. Is that absolute? No, it's not. Okay, so all we're saying is at least we get a date with relative dating. You're just dating something in relation to something else. You don't get an exact dates. The only other two things you need to know are the law of association and the law of superposition. This, is, this didn't come out very well, but the law of association means if you have two artifacts in the same stratigraphic layer, you can generally assume that they're the same age. Same thing with the law of superposition. It just means if you have different stratigraphing layers with artifacts in them, the ones at the bottom are generally older than the ones at the top. So that is as far as we're going to go with dating and we'll talk a little bit more about it next time. But understand as we go along in the course, you just need to know the very basics of stratigraphy and you have to know a little bit about radiocarbon dates. That's all for now. Talk to you next week.